And now we want to cross over to Nyeri County where we have our reporter, Karon Derry. And uh, looking at that story we just read, there already seems to be some uh, unsettlement in Nyeri. Karo, thank you for joining us this morning. Before even the late governor is laid to rest, there seems to be uh, some people who are not happy with how things are going in Nyeri. What can you tell us about that, Karo? Good morning, Michael. Nyeri County, Chile, people still in mourning here, but the burial preparations are ongoing. As Kenyans may be aware, there are three committees that are in charge of planning uh, for the funeral, one in Nairobi at the national level, one at the county level, and one at the family level. So they're all working in conjunction together to ensure that the late Dr. Homegakuru is given a befitting funeral, befitting his status as near as that uh, governor. It was quite a tragic, uh, you know, the passing at the, uh, during the accident. Okay, the people of Nyeri County are still quite in mourning over that. Uh, with me is the CC in charge of uh, transport infrastructure and information, who has also been the spokesperson during this very trying time for the people of Nyeri County, Motoy Karaoke. And with him as well is the legal advisor for Nyeri County government. We'll be talking to both of them shortly. But let us just give them a chance to bring us to speed fast about the funeral arrangements. Thank you very much, Mheshimiwa. Mipango Ikoji, up until now. Uh, thank you, Karo. Uh, to begin with, I would like to thank the people of Nyeri for the support they have continued to give us as a county government and also uh, the family of our late governor. Also to thank uh, the people of Kenya, led by the... Council of Governors, once again, for the preparations that they continue with, we are most grateful. And of course, the head of state for having gone to console with the family yesterday, that has made them uh, delay, you know, come back uh, to themselves. It was a great loss for every one of us. Anyway, to bring you to speed, uh, the preparations continue uh, at uh, the county governor's level, which is going on in Nairobi. At the home, uh, they, they're going on very well. Uh, we were there up to late uh, last night. A Kirisho Primary School, where we will be, everybody will be congregating for the funeral service, and Kagumo Boys High School, where we will be having our parking and everything else. And from today, we are going to we have made arrangements for people of this county who would want to come and pay their tribute and uh, condole with us. Uh, we've uh, reserved a home at a Green Hills Hotel, Kitmi Kaiho, where everybody else now can come, sign the book of condolences, and also um, pray with us. Uh, as uh, starting as uh, from today, I would like to assure everyone else that uh, come uh, come Thursday uh, next week, everything will be in place. So it has been confirmed the funerals for the 18th as this month. This morning, the funeral was still 18th. Yeah. yeah. Well, away from the funeral arrangements, there was the matter of the swearing-in of the deputy governor that was scheduled to be yesterday, but for some reasons it was postponed. I understand. Could you tell us about that? Uh, well, that one I will leave our legal, uh, legal advisor uh, to advise uh, Kenyans on what there is, although we are working as a team, that is a Lily in his docket. Okay? Mr. Mm -hmm. Mugab, please. Okay. All right. We'll talk to you. Don't go. No, no, I'm not going. Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe you switch positions kindly so that uh, you can go to that side. Thank you very much, Buana David Mugo. Thank you, Carol. All right. Mm. The legal bit of it, the swearing in, it was supposed to happen yes. yesterday, but you postponed um, it. I would want to tell the people of Nyeri that... Uh, the government is still in place. The deputy governor, of course, automatically becomes the governor. Uh, there is that little bit about the swearing in, which um, the deputy governor has chosen, he has made a choice, and he has said that uh, because of the respect that he had for the late governor, he would only want to be sworn in after he is buried. So that is the position. And um, it is, uh, uh, I do not foresee anything, any technicalities. So what we want to tell the people of Nyeri Kenyans is that we shall have the swearing in after the burial. Yes. All right. Yeah. So for those who thought that the postponement has something to do with intrigues, political or otherwise, it is not true? No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. It is the deputy governor himself who has made a choice. He has said because of his great respect for the late governor, he would want to be sworn in after he is buried. So that as of now, uh, our priority will be giving him, the late governor, governor a decent burial. Right. 
Yes. But other than that, the reason why there was need to move with speed, apart from him requesting to be sworn in after the funeral because of the respect he had for the late governor, legally it would be important were you explaining the need for a swearing in as soon as possible or as soon as practically possible? Um, um, you know, we have, uh, we have chief officers in place eh, who are the technical persons who run the government. So any eventualities that may arise can easily be handled by the chief officers. Yes, okay. who, are, uh, who are still, every department has a chief officer. Yes. So there is no power vacuum? No power vacuum at all. In fact, the deputy governor automatically becomes governor. Uh -huh. But there is that requirement for him to take an oath, which we have said will happen after the burial. Mm -hmm. What about the CCs? Because the law also says that once a governor passes on or is impeached or vacates office, then the CCs also vacate office. Are they coming to work? Or what is the position right now? Um, that is the law, as you have quoted it right. And uh, but uh, the CCs are still around. Of course, they lack that legal. But uh, the deputy governor has given them an assurance that he will continue working with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, though the law also says that it is his prerogative, or it would be upon the new governor to decide whether to continue with the same CCs. I mean, seeing that they've only been uh, working for a week since they were sworn in, or to choose others, the legal uh, requirement. Could you kindly explain it to Kenya? Yes, as you have said it, eh, Carol. The requirement is that. Uh, the deputy governor, once he takes over, once he takes the oath, will have the discretion to determine who to work with. Yes, that is the law. Article 179 of our constitution and 182 of our constitution. Yeah. Mm. So I know he will be making that choice. And um, he is keen on pursuing the joint vision that they had with the late governor. And he has repeated that it was their joint vision. Every decision that was made was made together. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you had spoken a few days ago that this is the second time this is happening in Nyeri County. And the first time you had to seek the counsel of the Attorney General because this uh, scenario had not been uh, seen or witnessed in Kenya where a governor passes on while still in office. Now, if Mutai Kahiga is sworn in and he becomes Nyeri's fourth governor, he shall remain without a deputy governor. You were talking about amendments that you were looking into. Could you kindly also explain that? That he will now be without a deputy. What happens? Because um, when he's out of Nyeri... Yes, the law, there seems to have been an omission in regard to the county government. So that um, when the deputy governor takes over, he does not have the power, the legal power, or the legal uh, obligation to appoint a deputy. In fact, uh, I had it being discussed yesterday in the Senate, and the Attorney General had actually said that he would be making he would be making a proposal to the Senate to look into that matter, because uh, in regard to the national government, the law is clear: if a deputy president took over, or if the office of deputy president became vacant, the president has an option, or has a has a has a way of appointing a deputy, but with the approval of the National Assembly. I hope the Senate is going to look into this matter. You know, there's a new constitution. Yeah, would you say there's a lacuna? Mm, there's a new constitution, and everybody agrees, even the Attorney General agreed there was a lacuna. So I hope the Senate, the National Assembly, are going to look into that matter, because we as a county cannot make any law in regard to that. It can only come from the Senate and the National Assembly. Yeah. Mm. So, to the people of Nyeri County, the swearing in of their next governor shall be done after the funeral. After the funeral, yes, we can confirm that. Mm. All right, Bonamudoi, something else maybe you'd like to add? Uh, well, just uh, to ask um, the people of Nyeri, and indeed uh, Kenya in general, to be patient with us. Uh, very shortly after this uh, funeral, they are going to have a governor. And so there is nothing to worry about. The county is still moving on. Like uh, my colleague has said, uh, we have got uh, chief officers in place. And of course, we are also around to help him. And we are to help them. And we are doing this, of course, with the consent uh, of the acting uh, governor, uh, Mr. Um, Kahiga Mutahi. Yeah. And uh, as the legal advisor, David Muko, has just said, that uh, the governor 
or the acting governor now, had expressed willingness to continue with the vision that they had together with the late Dr. Homer Gakuru as a CC or the CC for transport infrastructure and information. Together with other CCs, you've only been in office for a week. So you are hoping that the new governor shall continue with you as the same CCs, although he has the prerogative to either continue with others or the same people as a, as a CC right now. What do you have to say regarding that? That I'm the, I have been the shortest serving a, a, a CEC, a 80 days today. Uh, it is our hope, really, because we also, uh, together with the late governor, we had a vision. He had given a chance to serve the people of Nyeri, and we believe since him and uh, the late uh, him and uh, the current uh, acting governor uh, selected this, uh, this uh, cabinet together, we hope that you find it just fitting uh, to continue with it and therefore give us a chance uh, to continue serving the people of Nyeri as they too had hoped. Because we too had a vision and want to be part and parcel of carrying forward the vision that the little Governor Gakuru had for the, really for the good of the people of Nyeri. We hope, although it remains his prerogative, I cannot comment on his behalf. Yeah. This shall be a state funeral. Could you explain that as well um, to, the, to the people watching and to the people of Nyeri and Kenyans at large? How this funeral exactly shall play out being a state funeral? What should they expect? Uh, well, that is to say that um, the office of the president, you know, takes over most of the activities. Uh, we will be helping them. We are getting guidance now from Harambe House, but we are still playing uh, our role. When you hear it's a state funeral, it means the entire government uh, will be here, the president will be around, and of course everything else will be done in accordance uh, with uh, what Harambe will direct. There is uh, their procedures when there is a state funeral, uh, you're going to witness them this Saturday or no, tomorrow. As uh, we're burying uh, Bishop Correo in Eldoret, exactly what will be done in that place, though it be Catholic, is exactly what we should expect to see here as we are burying the rich uh, governor, uh, Dr. Ahmed Akuru. Okay. Yeah. The Council of Governors has uh, appealed or requested all the county heads to contribute to the funeral, and we've seen at least one governor say mm, he isn't so sure he wants to contribute. Do you have any comments regarding that? No, no comment. It's uh, their will. Uh, I believe each in his own way, his own literal way. If one county or the other feels they don't want to contribute, Lily, <laughs> Dr. Kakuru was not a pauper, neither is this county a pauper. I can say that uh, the funeral will still go on, but it is only good and we are happy and very grateful to the Council of Governor for us, having us, those who wanted to contribute, or those who can contribute to contribute. Otherwise, no your feelings if uh, some county feels they cannot uh, really be able uh, to go by that um, uh, request from the Council of Governors. That is their own will, and uh, there's nothing we can say about it. Yeah. Way forward for the people of Nyeri. Uh, when we were talking to the people on the streets, they were saying or telling us, could you, could you request that we have uh, prayers, uh, county prayer day, because how can this happen? Of course, you know, sometimes people can be superstitious. It is uh, it's bad luck that Nyeri has lost two governors within a year. But are there plans maybe for county prayers at any point? That is what the people are asking us when we are talking to them on the streets. That is why I'm always uh, happy about my colleagues in the media. You see, you have just given me another idea, and because there is a meeting going on, I'm going to present it just now. But like I had said earlier on, there will be a chance for people uh, every evening starting from today at Green Hills to come and condole with us and pray with us. But we are going to put it to the committee just now, say what request the people of Nyeri are making, and then uh, we'll hear and uh, we'll advise you accordingly uh, within the course of the day or tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Any final remarks before I get final remarks from the legal advisor? Let us continue playing for this county, continue playing uh, for the family, and more so uh, the young son of the late doctor uh, who is sitting for his uh, exams, that he does well in spite of this tragedy that has struck the family. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank Carol. you very much. Legal advisor, final remarks? Um, I would uh, urge the people of Nyeri uh, that this is a time for us to remain united, to remain together as we prepare to bury our governor. This is not a time for politics. This is, a this is not a time for gossip. I urge that we be united. Let us continue praying for our county and our country. We also know what is going on in the Supreme Court. You know, I think it's a very trying time for Nyeri and Kenya. So let us keep our country and our county in prayers.
Yes. Thank you very much, legal advisor David Mugo and CC plus spokesperson Mudui Karioki. I will let you go back to the meeting. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for honoring my request to for this interview. All right, we'll say hi. Thank you very much. We've just been speaking to the legal advisor David Mugo together with the CC Transport Infrastructure and Information, who is also doubling up as a spokesperson during this difficult time for the people of Nyeri County. And they've spoken quite extensively. We have heard them talking about the burial plans, talking about the legal structure and uh, the swearing of the new governor. He has requested that it be done after the funeral of the late Dr. Homega Kuru, which is scheduled for the 18th of this month. They were supposed to have done it yesterday, but they postponed it, and postponed it. And now they have explained the reasons why it is because Mutahi Kahiga, who will be near his fourth governor, has requested that it be done after the funeral. But in normal, in a normal setting, it's supposed to be done as soon as possible, so that there there's no power vacuum or any loopholes. But also the legal advisor explaining that they had sought the counsel of the attorney general even the first time when the late Governor Andari Togashagwa passed on early February, or early in the year, in February, late February, this year, they had sought the counsel of the Attorney General to explain some of the nitty gritties. And he's still admitting, Bonamugo, the legal advisor, is still admitting that there is a lacuna still, and they're hoping that the, the Senate will uh, be able to streamline, because there are amendments that have been looked into, what should exactly happen if a governor of any county passes on as it has happened here in Erie County, not once, but twice now. Back to you. Thank you very much.